ya está. Voy a empezar a hablar. Shalom, everyone. It's a pleasure to be together on this very, very special, special night as we are preparing ourselves for Yud Shvat. Yud Shvat. And uh, today I wanted to speak to you about the power of tzaddikim. Why does God use tzaddikim in the world? And what exactly is the role of these tzaddikim? And especially when we speak about tzaddikim, we speak about a tzaddik like the Rebbe. What is a Rebbe? What is a Nasi? Why is a Rebbe called a Nasi? Why is he called a Rebbe? I'm going to share on a personal note. I don't come from a Chabad background. He grew up to a Sephardic Moroccan family, traditional. And therefore, me coming to Chabad and coming to the Rebbe, connecting with the Rebbe, has been a process since I'm 14, 15 years old, where I discovered more and more what a Rebbe is. Having learned in many, many different circles, the appreciation I have for the Rebbe is unbelievable because I have a point of comparison. So, first of all, what is a tzaddik? What is what we refer to as a righteous person? We have the Tanya that explains to us Sefer Shel Benoniim, what a Benoni is, but it's tzaddik is of another dimension. God saw that the tzaddikim were very few, and therefore he put these tzaddikim in every generation. It's true there are many, many, many tzaddikim. But there is one which is special. What does it mean special? And when did this concept that a man could actually be a person which is the foundation of the world, when did it start? It actually started in Parashat Lech Lecha. In Parashat Lech Lecha, God gives many, many, many blessings to Avraham Avinu, Avraham, our forefather, and he says to him, You are going to be a blessing. And Rashi on the spot explains, Aberachot Netunot Lach. The blessings are now going to be given to you, Abraham. In the past, I gave the blessings. Now I'm going to make sure that all the blessings are given through you. The Kliyaka, which is Shlomo Ephraim, Shlomo Ephraim, the Kliyaka, a tremendous, beautiful commentary, commentary on the Torah, explains that even the blessings of rain in China and Russia and uh, the whole situation of the whole globe has now been given to Avram Avinu. And Avram is the channel that actually through which Hashem is going to give and bring bracha, bring blessing to everyone. We say in our prayer, in the Nishmat Kol Chai prayer that we say on Shabbat. With the, look at the movement here. Befi, with the mouth, which is something general, the mouth. The, the mouth of the, those who are straight, you will be elevated. Tzadikim, with the lips of the righteous, Tidbarach, you will, we will, you will be blessed. Uvil Shon, and with the tongue, which is deeper, of Hasidim, of those who are pious, uh, which will be sanctified. Uv and when the innards, with the inside of Kedoshim, those who are holy, Tit Halal, you will be uh, exalted. There are different levels. But the Tzaddik in general is Tit he's the one that has the power of Bracha, to draw down the presence of Hashem in the world. He is called Re'aya Me'emna. He is called like Moshe Rabbeinu, the faithful shepherd, the shepherd of faith, the one that internalizes, brings the faith. It shouldn't be something which is just a mere lofty concept, but it should be something that 
permeates the person. A few days ago, on Rosh Chodesh Shvat, we just started a process of 36 days. 36 days from Rosh Chodesh Shvat all the way to the passing of Moshe Rabbeinu, the seventh of Adam, where Moshe Rabbeinu repeats the whole Torah in the fifth book of the Torah, which is the book of Devarim, called the Mishneh Torah. You might ask, why do we need to repeat the Torah? And why does Moshe Rabbeinu need to repeat the Torah? The first four books, we already got it. What do we need a fifth one? The Rebbe explains that there are two ways that God reveals himself in the world. There is what we call derech ma'avar, in a way of passage. And there is the way we call derech itlapshut, through actually permeating and internalizing. What does it mean? When Moshe Rabbeinu spoke to the Jewish people, he was just a speaker. In the first four books, God speaks to Moshe. The throat of Moshe becomes the speakerphone, so to say, for God's voice, for God's presence. In the fifth book, we do not find, like in the first four books, and God said to Abraham, and God said to Moses, and God said to the Jewish people, I'm sorry, God says to Aaron, and so on and so forth. In the fifth book, we find, and God told me, and God did this, and God did that. But it's Moshe Rabbeinu that's speaking. Actually, you will be shocked. But the parasha of the Shema, the first and second chapter, which are found in Parashat Ekev, Parashat Vayet Hanan, in the fifth book of the Torah, where in the second chapter, it is said, When you will listen to the precepts of Hashem, serve Him, love Him, I will give the rain. I'm going to give. How can Moshe Abinu speak like that? It's God speaking through him. But it's actually being internalized through him. Because the purpose of Torah is lo he the Torah is not in the heavens. The Torah needs to be a part of our reality. So God wants that it should permeate Moshe. Moshe, the head of the Jewish people, Moshe Rabbeinu, Rabbeinu Rabbi, Rabbi Resh Bet Yud Rosh, head Bene of the Jewish people, Israel. We are connected to the head. What happens is that Moshe Rabbeinu, where did he get his name? The Mitle Rabbi Torah Chaim explains. Moshe is called Moshe Kiminamai Meshkitiu because he was pulled from the waters. The Mitle Rabbi explains, what does that mean? We know from the Ma'amar Batile Gani that the presence of Hashem got pushed away from the earth with all the sins of Adam, Cain, etc. for seven generations. Abraham started a process of being the leader of the generation and drawing down the presence of Hashem from the seventh heaven to the sixth. Yitzchak, the sixth to the fifth the fifth to the fourth, till Moshe Rabbeinu, the seventh, was able to draw down the presence of God and bring the Torah down in this reality, in this world. Ah, the Mitter Rebbe asks, but how did Moshe Rabbeinu have the power to draw down the wisdom of God and make it that it should actually permeate and become one with physical matter? Yaakov put on tefillin, he used to put pieces of wood which would be soft and put him around his arm and say the Shema and bring God's presence down in the world. But the way of bringing down that presence was only temporary. At the moment he would wear them, the presence of God would be brought down. But right after, that piece of wood that was just used a second ago to bring God's presence down could be thrown away. Moshe Rabbeinu did more than that. He was able to make that the mechitza, the boundary between heavens and earth, should be completely shattered in such a way that man does a mitzvah, he actually permeates physicality and makes it holy. 
Today you write a word of Torah on a piece of paper, that piece of paper is holy. Where did Moshe Rabbeinu get the power to draw the presence of God down? From Avraham. Who is Avraham? Avraham represents chesed, kindness. Water is two, represents count kindness. So when it says in the Torah, why was he called Moshe? He got his power from the water. He was drowned, drowned, drawn from the waters. The power of Abraham to draw down God's presence, that's what gave the power to Moshe to draw the presence of Hashem in this world. So, Moshe Rabbeinu is the leader. He's the leader that's there to fight for his people to defend them in front of God, to put his life on the line. If you're not going to go with us, God, if you're not going to forgive these people for the golden calf, chapter 32, verse 32, which 32 is Lamed Bet, Lev, the heart, the essential heart of Moshe is, I'm ready to sacrifice myself for the same people that fight me. Moshe Rabbeinu has no ego. We know two things about Moshe. Moshe has absolutely no ego. He's the most humble person. He's not a liar. He doesn't say, no, I didn't speak to God. If you ask me and start is a bluff, God forbid. Moshe Rabbeinu says, yes, I did speak to God. But I believe that if God spoke to you, you would have done a better job than me. And I believe that with the whole truth. So Moshe Rabbeinu is humble at the highest level. Therefore, he's empty of any ego and God's presence is able to dwell upon him. A second thing is said about Moshe, Moshe Eved Hashem. Moshe is the servant of God. Bechol Beti, in my whole home, Neeman who is faithful. We see that Avram too. Concerning Avram, it says the word faithful. What does it mean to be faithful for a shepherd? It means that the fact that I'm going to have followers, the fact that I'm going to educate, the fact that I'm going to have success in my mission, I'm still faithful to my mission for my personal desire. And that's what the Talmud says about the great rabbi, which was a miracle worker by the name of Rabbi Hanina ben Dosa. The Talmud says that God says, Kola olam kulo eno nizon ela bishvil hanina beni. The whole world is nourished in the merit of my son Hanina. Vehu, and he has enough with a little jar of water and some carrots. That's good enough for him. He doesn't care about himself. I remember the Rebbe's house, how the wallpaper was sticking to the to the roof, to the uh, ceiling, I'm saying. I don't care about what I have. What can I give you? What can I awaken in you? Therefore, the Baal Shem Tov explains that the word Bishvil in Hebrew, the world is nourished and sustained for the merit of, by the merit of Bishvil, Hanina, can actually be read in another word, in another way. The word shvil could mean the passageway. The world is nourished through Khanina Bini. And now we can understand why a person like Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai had the possibility to say on himself, Anasimana Be'alma, you know what, I'm a sign. I'm the ultimate sign for the world, for Hashem in the world. What's a sign? A sign, for example, in Florida, we have Orlando. See, Orlando is a sign. The sign is nothing. But the sign gives you the direction of where Orlando is. See a person like Abraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, a Nasi, a prophet, a Navi, a prophet, a Nasi, Israel. 
you understand that that tzaddik is just a sign. He has nothing for himself. I'm going to just show you the direction you're going to look at me. And since I'm empty of my ego, I'm a chariot of Hashem. A chariot is not like the horse that wants to go in a direction. You whip it, it goes in the other direction, or you give it a carrot. It's not like the driver that has a desire, but you pay him and he will not do what he wants, but he's going to do what's going to bring him money. The chariot has apps, the carriage has absolutely no entity of itself. Wherever the driver goes, that's where it goes. The ultimate tzaddik, the one which is empty of all ego, King David says, my heart is empty within me because I completely took out, took away any type of desire for this world. That type of tzaddik has no ego. He's a sign for Hashem. And through him, you can understand a little what the presence of Hashem is. The world is nourished through him, through his passage, through his channel. Now we can understand a little more why the Nasi, the Nasi Ado, is called a Nasi. The prince of the generation is referred to as a Nasi. What's a Nasi? What's a prince? The word, the Nasi is somebody which is able to connect heaven and earth. If you look in Kabbalah and Hasidut, we explain that there are two levels. There's the world, the world's existence, and there's a spiritual godly existence. And there is the world which is finite and limited. Only somebody which controlled himself can be in control of the world. We know that it teaches in our holy Torah that Tzadik Kozeh Vashem Emekayem. The Tzadik decrees and God accomplishes. The Tzadik God. God makes a decree and the tzaddik can annul the decree. That's why we see in Parashat Vayetchanan that Moshe Rabbeinu prayed 515 prayers and God says, please stop it because you can pray one more prayer, I'll have no choice but to listen to you. So I'm asking you to please stop it. The tzaddik has that power to nullify decrees. But the tzaddik is the one which is able to communicate, to connect to heaven and earth. And that's why, how do we say physicality? In the expression of Hasidut, we call it yesh, existence. How do we call the level of spirituality, the in infinite level? We call it ayin. If you take the word nasi, nun, Shin, Yud, Aleph, in this word, you have the two words. Nun at the exterior, Yud and Nun, I'm sorry. Uh, in, I'm sorry again. Nun, Aleph, and Yud. Aleph, Yud, Nun is in the word Nasi, which is the word Ain which is the spiritual world. And in the word Nasi, you have the letter Shin and Yud, which is Yesh, existence. The Nasi is the one that's able to bring both together. I would like to share with you at this time something unbelievable that was revealed to me this year. During being myself from Moroccan descent, I uh, knew that there was an existence of such a letter, such a thing, but I never actually had seen it. Recently, just a few days ago, was the Hilula, the passing of a great, great tzaddik in Israel, which died in 19, which passed on, I'm sorry, in 1984, by the name of the Baba Sali. The Baba Sali was a descendant of great Moroccan tzaddikim, 
from all the way from Rabbi Shmuel Elbaz to Yaakov Abu Hatzira. And he was a great, great tzaddik. I would like to read to you a letter that he wrote to the Rebbe in 1952, a year after the Lubavitcher Rebbe took the mantle of leadership of Chabad. This letter is going to open our eyes to what a true tzaddik is and how we need to be connected to the tzaddik in a very, very strong way in order to be able to be elevated. Because as the Balatanya says in chapter two, the Torah says, we have a mitzvah to connect to God, to bond with Hashem. And Rashi in Parashat Ekev on the verse says, but how is it possible to bond to God? God is a consuming fire. How can you bond with a fire? And to this, Rashi explains and brings from the Talmud, the person that attaches himself to a tzaddik, to a sage of Torah, which his whole existence is Torah, then it's as if he attaches himself to the Shekhinah. Let me give you a little Dreka. Let me give you a little the context of what happens. The Baba Sali just had come from Morocco, moved to Israel. And in Israel, he was known already for his great miracles and saving people and uh, bringing health and the success and blessings to all the people that would come to see him day and night. In 1952, the Rebbe had just become a Rebbe and nobody really knew about the Rebbe. I mean, not like today. Chabad was certainly not what it is today. The Rebbe was a young man. He was actually, at the time, he was, um, he was uh, 50 years old. 50 years old. The Baba Sali was 12 years older than he was. So give me one second. I'm just going to open this letter and read you that letter. And from this letter, we'll understand how Tzadikim communicate and what was the appreciation that the um, Baba Sali had for the for the Rebbe. One second. Here we go. One second. Okay. The Baba Sali writes this letter on Yud Nisan Tavshin Yud Bet, the 10th of Nisan, 1952. In this letter, he starts the following. He starts and says this, um, the, um, the following. I hope everybody sees me while I'm reading this letter. Lichvot Kodesh Kodashi. I write to the Honorable Holy of Holies, Amud HaOlam, Pillar of the World, Or Israel Vetorato, the light of the Jewish people and his Torah, Shelokam Kemoto, that never anyone stood of this caliber, Sarah Torah Vayira, the Prince of Torah and the Prince of the Fear of Hashem, Ahuv Bashamaim. Uva'aretz, loved in heavens and the earth. Morenu verabenu arav Milubavich, Our teacher and master, the Rebbe of Lubavitch. And this is what Rabbi Israel Abu Chatzira writes to the Rebbe. Ineni avdecha katan Israel, I, your servant, your small servant, Israel. Aliti mi Morocco, Israel. I made my aliyah from Morocco to Israel. 
ואנשים כאן לא נתנוני אשב רוחי, באים אליי בכל שעות היום והלילה, ונבצר ממני לעבוד את השם כאשר הייתה באומנה ימי ימים ולילות שלא ביטלתי מהתורה רגע אחד. And people, since I've come to Israel, they do not let me live for every hour of the day and the night. They come to see me. And I cannot serve God. Imagine, I can't serve God day and night the way I did when I was in Morocco and I didn't waste one minute of Torah. The Atta and now, he writes to the Rebbe, Nafshi b'she'elati, I have a question for you. Im uchal, if I could please, lavo elecha le'artzot abrit, if I could please come to America to you. Now you have to understand, the Rebbe just became a Rebbe, who knows him? Lagur al yadecha b'kirvat makom, to live next to you, in a very close way, ve'esater menei kol ish, so I could hide from all these people running after me. And then, this is the punchline, which is, for me, was a mind opener. I accepted upon myself that whatever the rabbi, the Rebbe, says, I will accept. And then, the Baba Sali ends his letter and says, why am I doing this? You might say, why do I want to accept your authority? Because you are the pillar of the world. And then, this is the line that was the biggest shock for me. The great Kabbalist, the true Kabbalist, the Baba Sali says, because you are the pillar of the world, and this is what was declared in the heavens. This is tremendous. We understand, we understand that, we understand, I heard that there was a problem with the camera. We understand that if a person of that level, which never saw the Rebbe, writes to the Rebbe in such a way when the Rebbe is not known. The Rebbe doesn't have this empire of Shluchim everywhere in the world. You can understand that there's something of another dimension when we speak about the Rebbe, when we speak the Nasiya of the Nasiya Dabur, the leader of the generation. And therefore, when we come to Yud Shvat, which is the day that the Rebbe took the mantle of leadership, we have to make a conscious decision to say, you know what? I'm going to attach myself to the Rebbe. I'm going to do something to be attached to that pillar of the world. How do you do it? First of all, I want to share, before I tell you that and conclude, I would like to share with you two stories. There was a woman which was the first black lady to be elected to Congress. When they elected her, and unfortunately at this time, there was a lot of racism. In order to shame her, embarrass her, they put her as the head of agriculture. You're not going to deal with people, you're going to deal with fields. And that made her feel very bad. When she was running, and her district, one of her districts was Crown Heights. She asked to see the Rebbe, but the Rebbe wouldn't see her. Now that she got elected to Congress, the Rebbe called her in for a private audience. She came and the Rebbe told this lady, I want to tell you, I know you are broken, but you have a tremendous opportunity. You have the opportunity with all the surplus of food to nourish so many poor families. As a result, the food stamps, the WIC checks given to the families that have many kids and are unfortunately not in a good financial spot started from that. Right away when I hear this story, it reminds me of Yosef, which is the minister of finance of the whole Egypt and the whole world. Another story. There was a general of the Israeli army. Both these stories have been publicized in Chabad 
reliable sources. A general of the Israeli army used to come to see the Rebbe and tell, give him a report of how many soldiers fell, how many soldiers died that year. And one year, he said to the Rebbe, 30 soldiers passed away this year. He was at a private audience. The Rebbe looked for a second and said, 32. He didn't argue with the Rebbe. The next year he came back and said to the Rebbe, Rebbe, you were right. It was 32, but how did you know? And the Rebbe said a mind-boggling answer. The Rebbe said, you have to know that every soul that comes into this world and that leaves this world goes through this office. The sensitivity of the tzaddik. It's not about putting down people, telling them you did this sin and that sin, I could see on you. It's not about, God forbid, taking people for a right and using the name tzaddik in order to extort money and play with people's emotions and weak situations. God forbid. The Rebbe's vision is a Rebbe, is a, is a vision of love. A vision that I'm going to be your mirror and I'm going to be at the same time a mirror that's going to be a magnifying glass for you, a magnifying mirror that's going to show you where you can reach, what is your true potential, what is your true identity. So when we connect to Hasidut, when we connect to the Rebbe by, and this is the next step, how do we connect to the Rebbe? We connect to the Rebbe by, by studying Torah. by studying Chumash on a daily basis, like the Rebbe asks, with Hashi. Tanya, the essence, the soul of Torah, on a daily basis, the way it's divided throughout the days of the year. Tehilim, saying Tehilim, the way it's divided in the 30 days of the month. By studying the Rambam, by studying Maimonides, and knowing all the laws of the Torah. The way that you can connect to the Rebbe is through the study of Torah. Thank God on Chabad.org, you just go, you put Chabad daily studies. You could add the screen to your phone and every day, take a few minutes, it's there. You even have Allah Shalom Rabbi Gordon's classes, which will explain if you have more time to study. If you have less time, do it yourself. You're going to see that there's no greater connection to Hashem. There is no greater tool, vessel, to receive God's blessings than to study Torah. And when you do things, because the Rebbe said that these are essential things that every soul of the Jewish people needs, besides being a channel for protection and blessing, it's a channel to connect to do what the Rebbe wants. The more you study and you connect to the tzaddik, you connect to the Rebbe, the more you're going to feel an energy, you're going to feel inspired, energized, and you'll be able to be that channel, that extended hand of the Rebbe to transform lives. So let's not take the whole theme of a tzaddik lightly. The Rebbe, his head is above in the heavens but his feet are on the ground, very much on the ground. He feels the pulse of every one of his chassidim. And therefore, when we celebrate on a day like Yuchvat, the passing of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, and the fact that the Rebbe took the mantle of leadership, this is a time where we need to reconnect to the Rebbe and strengthen our connection. I'm going to finish with one last story, which shows the incredible selflessness of what the Rebbe is. On Monday, as we say, is the stalkus of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe. 
When the previous Lubavitch Rebbe came to America, he didn't, he was completely broken. <laughs> Excuse me. He was on a wheelchair. And he had suffered tremendously. There was an ad of a certain yeshiva by the name of Torah Vedas. And that yeshiva was going through very, very great difficulties. I don't know if it was five or $15,000 they were missing. If not, they were going to lose their building. They were one of the only institutions of Torah that was a legitimate institution of Torah that was teaching Torah. They put an ad in the paper saying that we're about to lose our building. Somebody wants to help us, please help us. They got a phone call from the secretary of the previous Lubavitcher saying, how much do you need? They said the amount, they said the amount which was enormous. And when he said, I'm the secretary of the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, they said, Who <laughs> what, is, what is he going to help us? Yes, he's just came in America. He's not doing well himself. And he needs money himself to build his institutions. The secretary made an appointment with the heads of this yeshiva and presented them with an envelope with the money. They were in shock. They said, why, why did the Rebbe do this? He says, concerning this question, the Rebbe said, please, first of all, I'm giving you this money. I don't have any money for my institutions. I took a loan. I ask you, as soon as you're able to pay back the loan, please pay back the loan. They paid back the loan. And if you're going to ask me, why am I doing this? The previous Rebbe answered like this. He said, if in Russia, where we were not allowed to study Torah, we sacrificed our lives and we put our lives on the line. People were getting killed, literally. And as soon as one was, God forbid, killed or, or sentenced to exile, another teacher was ready to go and study Torah. He says, if there we're ready to put our life on the line, in a place where you're free to, to study Torah, and you're studying Torah, the only thing you need is money, I'm not going to, to support and do everything I can to save the Torah. This can only be a tzaddik emet. Only somebody which is all about God, his Torah, and the truth can act in such a way, which is completely selfless. And therefore, that person is the sign, is the channel, is the sign that indicates and says, you know, you want to see God? Connect to the Rebbe, and he's going to show you where God is inside of every single one of you. Good night. And let's marry it, Pesat Hashem, that before you Shvat, we'll all be dancing with Mashiach in Jerusalem. And we'll be able to finally say, die, enough to all the tzarot of Am Yisrael, and the prophecy of our Holy Rebbe that we all heard with our ears, that Mashiach will come in this generation, will finally realize itself, and we'll see it with our own eyes. Shabbat Shalom.